as you can see, different backdrop behind me. Um, it's about minus three outside. Uh, we usually do it on the riverbank, but we decided to get out of the cold, come in here and uh, talk about some perch. So for me, perch fishing starts in autumn, you know, on the turn or summer when the leaves start to drop from the trees. It's a species that I always put in a bit of time, both on rivers and on lakes. Not as much time on the rivers in recent years. However, I do do a lot of fishing for the perch on the lakes. In autumn, it's still not really cold, so they're a lot more active. Uh, they're usually easier to catch because they're actively, they're seeking out their food and moving around more. So autumn is a great time to target perch. We set off today to try and catch a river perch for the camera. Now, conditions were against us and I'm not one for making excuses, but do you know what? This time I am. <laughs> and conditions were dreadful. You know, as, as I'm speaking now, I believe it's minus three outside. Uh, we've had that sort of Baltic weather move in. Everywhere's frozen. Um, obviously the rivers are still running, but they're freezing cold. So conditions were bad. And to be honest, we weren't expecting too much. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, we tried a number of different swims, different parts of the river different baits and we couldn't oh actually i'll lie we did actually catch a, a very small perch that was well i don't even know how it got the worm in its mouth to be honest because it was that small <laughs> we got a perch not big but it's a fish probably the smallest perch you're likely to see. I mean, the bait's bigger than the perch. Caught um, on a lovely homemade bobber float. They're actually made by Andrew Field, who's a very talented float maker and has made some lovely floats. And I just thought, how iconic and how lovely would that be to catch a perch on a specialised homemade perch bobber float um, out of the river? And it would have been easy to go on the feeder, but I really wanted one on the float. We tried, we put the effort in. As I said, conditions weren't good at all. And we had the tiniest of perch to show for our efforts. But, you know, the, being out there and fishing is always enjoyable for me. Um, I, you know, I like walking the river, I like seeing the nature and just being outside is good. But we went home with our towels between our legs. So not making any excuses or anything, but you know, it's, uh, it's going to be hard work when your net freezes solid. I mean, look at that, you know, and that's been out of the water for probably about 15, 20 minutes. Unbelievable. Solid. So I've been putting in quite a bit of time um, on a large still water. Uh, for the perch, for some very big perch. Um, I haven't had much success, to be honest, and I'm on my second season there, but you know, that's specimen angling, and that's, you know, low stock, big fish hunting. You've got to expect the blanks, you've got to put in the time and the effort, and hopefully you will get those rewards. But I've been unsuccessful so far. Um, I'm using um, similar methods to what I used on another lake uh, further down my way and that is basically a free running feeder rig with a fluorocarbon hook link and, and basically fishing a popped up lobworm. There's a, there's a bit of an art to popping up the lobworm when fishing for the perch. Um, over, over the years I've sort of experimented with different ways. You could pop it straight off the feeder, uh, so you're fishing sort of, you know, one and a half foot straight off the feeder, or you can actually just pop it up slightly, air inject certain parts where it will just waft, so it's kind of like a wafter bait, and that seems to be quite effective as well. So it's worth giving both of those methods a try. Maggot is fantastic for perch, and I always go to red maggot. It's very well known that, you know, red maggot seems to be attractive to the perch. I don't know why that is, but that's what I go with. Um, so, you know, very simple rigs, open-ended feeder, maggot sandwiched with some ground bait with some additives in it, and just fishing lobworm on the hook. And you know, that's a sort of static approach when fishing large, low stock lakes and you're baiting up with a spawn, so obviously accuracy is quite important. That's the sort of approach that I take on steel waters and I've had some good success with that. 
um, with some lovely perch um, recently, even though I've not yet got one out of this particular water, but hopefully that'll be a story for another day. I was very fortunate to get a tip off where there were some big perch being caught. Now, on the Thames, it's very important, and, and all rivers uh, for that matter, location is key. These fish, especially the big perch, they're gonna be in pods of age groups and they're gonna be small pods of fish. So location is critical. And, you know, when you find out or you hear about some fish being caught in a certain area, you have to make the most of it. Weather conditions can change rapidly, rain can come in and that will push the fish out. So those holding areas aren't guaranteed throughout because it can change. So those fish will and can move on. So you've got to hit it when the iron's hot and you've got to get there and you've got to make the most of it. Now, I was fortunate enough to you know, get a tip off of, of roughly where these perch were and I decided to make the trip down and, and target them. So my approach was to use a Paternoster rig, very good obviously for a live bait rig, and simply 10 pound main line all the way through with a, with a stop knot and then a, a Zeppler float, um, a 10 gram Zeppler float. I have used 15 gram in the past as well, depending on the size of the live bait that you're using. Um, and that float can obviously slide up the main line and, and actually hit the stop um, so that you can register a bite when the fish takes. Um, follow that main line all the way down and then you've got a tiny, tiny micro swivel or just attached to the main line, um, a rotten bottom of about four or five pounds um, and then your lead on the bottom of that and that's just so that you know if you if you get a take and the lead's in some snags or anything like that um, that can just break and snap off and you're still in contact with that fish um, and then obviously the, the line can't pull off from the actual paternoster which is sandwiched between two float stops which actually makes it adjustable uh, which is ideal for fishing at different depths sometimes perch like it lower down to the actual the riverbed Sometimes they take them higher up, so it's always worth experimenting with that. Um, hook link wise, just simply a, um, an eight pound fluorocarbon hook link, which is practically invisible underwater and perfect for live baiting for perch. Um, and then a size six B983 hook, very thin in the wire hook, excellent for live baiting. So the first thing I did was got the float rod out that I bought with me and caught my bait. So that was bleak, there's millions in there, they're sustainable, it's what the perch are eating. So I caught a bucket of bleak before I started and made my way down to the swim to where these fish had been caught. I set up, I mean, first light is probably one of the best times for big perch. Evening's good as well, but first light, uh, you, you can't beat first light. So I got the rods out, I, I had two. I had two live bait rods with me, increased my chances because I knew where they, they were at that point in time. So I flipped two rods out and uh, almost instantly I started to get some interest. I had a couple of you know, do a couple of knocks on one of the floats and um, I caught a couple of little perch, but when I say little, I'm talking sort of like eight ounce, sort of like half a pound. So nothing huge. And um, this sort of continued. And before I knew it, I'd, I'd pretty much run out of live baits and I couldn't catch any for love nor money. It was like, it, they just completely switched off and I couldn't catch any bait. And I, I started to get a bit worried because I was thinking, God, I've got to wait until it, you know, it starts to get dark again to catch these, this bait or move to another swim and catch them. Um, but I had one more bait left. I may have had two, but I had one more good bait left. I put the bait on and I swung it out. Um, it was quite a slow pace section of the Thames, so there wasn't really any features. It was just an area they were holding up. It's probably because of the depth. There was a bit of deeper water that went into shallow water. And I, I, I suspect that they were just sort of hanging out on the bottom of, of the bed there in, in the slack of water. Um, now, I flicked it out and it was probably out there about five, six minutes and then you get, like, it's, it's just so exciting. You get the, the float just starts to bob and you can see the ripples around it. And that's not, that's not a take. That's, that's the fish getting scared because it's, it's basically being stalked. And, you know, you get the indication before the take. And so, you know, you, you're kind of waiting for it. And it's so exciting and um, yeah, it's fantastic type of fishing because it's so visual. Anyway, the float just buried. I mean, like almost instantly and pulled about two, three, maybe even four foot slack line to hit that float on the, 
float stop because I was fishing slightly over dev and it was gone. And I got to the rod and it was already bending over. And it bang straight into this fish. And I mean, you, you just know it's a good perch when, when you hook them. They fight really hard, they dig deep. Anyway, I played it and, you know, it didn't take long before a big stripey just popped up and rolled on the surface. And then a hop was like that. And you're thinking, quick, 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 like net, net, where's the net? Um, looking around, obviously, you know, grabbing the net, but like still playing it and trying to be careful. And God, I think if I remember rightly, I could, I, I, I see the hook as well. And it was, it was in the corner, but it looked like it had just sort of nicked it. But, you know, it, everything goes through your mind, isn't it? Because you know, it's a, it's, it's a huge perch and you don't want to lose it. Anyway, came up again, whacked the net underneath, um, had a look in the net, lifted them up and I thought, wow, you know, that, that's what I was there for. Chuffed with this four pound, one ounce Thames perch. What an absolute beast of a fish. Beautiful colors as well. Um, just an amazing creature. Really pleased to have caught this one. Mega, can't beat it. It looks huge. I mean, as, as the late, great Dick Walker used to say, you know, they are the biggest fish of all because they look so big for their size. And it was a lovely fish. And to catch a river four, um, made my autumn uh, well beyond my expectations and yeah I was I was buzzing let's put it that way